Michael looked out over the murky water. His unkept dark hair and stubbled reflection looked back at him. They both smiled at each other. He couldn't believe he was finally here. Most 22-year-olds visit northern Spain for wine and women, but Michael Sparrow was not like most 22-year-olds. Since he was five years old, armed with a yellow Snoopy fishing pole, Michael had been obsessed. The first time he hooked a small yellow perch in his grandfather's pond, he himself was hooked. Michael had landed in Barcelona a few hours ago, and it had already seemed like days. His hands were raw from tying and retying lures on the three-hour train ride to Tortosa. His journey was finally over, so that his adventure could now begin. Michael Sparrow was going to catch a European monster on the Ebro River. Michael first heard of the tale of the European monster at a tavern near his favorite fishing spot back in Ohio. An old weathered man told of the legend as he sipped straight whiskey. The stranger claimed that his only son had been taken under by a 300-pound catfish. Michael initially wrote off the man's story as just another drunk with a fish tail. This was until he started doing some research. He came across claim after claim of men overseas pulling in Wells catfish that ranged from 150 to 200 pounds. Then he saw what brought him thousands of miles across an ocean, the thing that had caused him to skimp and save every penny for the last 18 months. A folded and faded black and white image of a fish so large that it had to be held up by three men. This catch would be his white whale. Michael walked to the edge of the rocky shore to cast his first line. It was almost dusk, but he had nowhere else he would or could be at this very moment. Hours passed. Michael's back ached and his stomach growled. He was miserable, but couldn't remember ever being happier. He was so close. Michael, an experienced fisherman, pressed on. He knew that patience was key. Cast after cast after cast, he pressed through the night and into dawn, his shoulders burning. As the morning clouds broke to reveal the first crack of light, it happened. Michael got a bite so strong that it lifted him from his feet. He regained his balance and began to reel like a man possessed. With laser focus, he reeled and pulled and reeled and pulled with every muscle in his body. The beast fought back with all of its might. The monster was now close enough so that Michael could see full size. It stretched seven feet in the water, struggling and splashing. A few more swift strokes and Michael would have his prize on shore. The monster made one last effort to escape, a worthy opponent using his long body as one huge muscle. Before his eyes, Michael's rod bent in a high arc like a crescent. Then with a loud crack, his rod broke in two. The giant was in shallow water, stunned and tired. Fueled on adrenaline and pride, Michael waded into the water and pulled the creature out with his two hands. Now bested, the fish gave little resistance. From the middle of the river, ripples appeared. Michael's focus was solely on his catch. The ripples grew near as Michael, now only a foot away from the shore, stumbling on the rocky bank in his wet sneakers. He saw a second set of tiny beady eyes as the water rose to his knees. He would not let go. He saw the shadow of a 12-foot monster. He would not let go. He saw the light get dimmer as he went further beneath the surface. Michael would never let go.